friends. I'm really glad you came back to join me for another Sunday School lesson. I'm really glad that you're here. So today we are going to read, I know I say this every week guys, but this really is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And it's going to teach us an important truth about the way God feels about us. So the truth that we're learning today, friends, is that God deeply loves you. Now I have a question for you. Does that mean God loves you this much? What about this much? Maybe this much? No, God deeply loves us. And that means he loves us this much, so much more than we could ever, ever, ever understand. That's how he feels about you. So I want you to take a minute and I want you to think about the person that you love most in the whole entire world. Maybe it's your grandma or your dad or your sister or your best friend. I want you to think about that person in your head. Hmm. Do you feel your heart fill up with love? The way that we love the people closest to us doesn't even come close to the way that God feels about you, friend. He loves you so much. When I think about how much I love my family and my kids, it makes me feel like my heart is going to burst. But that doesn't even come close to the way that God feels about his children, about you and about me. So the story we're gonna read today, friends, is an amazing example of the way that God feels about us. So we're gonna be in Luke chapter 15. Go ahead and grab your Bibles and get ready. I'll kind of explain the story first and then we'll jump in and keep reading through the Bible, okay? So this story is called the parable of the lost son. Now a parable is a story that Jesus would use to teach people important things. He used them as a way to help people understand things like, oh, mercy and grace. And this one is about all of those things and so much more. It is most the, the most perfect picture of God's love for us. So let's go ahead and pick up. And it's kind of a long story, but guys, guess what? Reading your Bible is great for you. So we're going to spend some serious time in the Word today. So picking up, we're in chapter 15. We're gonna start in verse 11. So this is Jesus talking. It says, then he said, a certain man had two sons. How many sons? Two. And the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. Pause, here's what's going on. The son is saying, I want my inheritance. Do you know what an inheritance is, friends? It is, let's say, it's it's what his father would give to him when his father died. So let's say if he had houses and money and things like that, when the father died, it would go to his sons. It's called an inheritance. And the son is going up to his dad and saying, I want all that now. I want you to give me all that money and all those things now. But what's really sad about this is at that time, when the son went to his dad and said, I want you to just give me all my money now. He was essentially telling his dad, like, I don't care if you're dead. Like, I would rather have the money. I, it's, he's saying to his dad, like, I don't love you. I don't care about you. Just give me my money and let me go. So it was not a very nice thing to do. So let's keep reading. It says in verse 13, and not many days after the youngest son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country and there wasted his provisions with prodigal living. So it says he took the money, he went away, and he just spent it poorly. He, he partied and he made bad choices and he spent all his money really quickly, just making terrible choices. It says, then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and, sent him into, and he sent him into the fields to feed the swine. So he runs out of money. He goes to a man in this other country and says, please, can I work for you? I'm out of money. And the guy says, sure, you can go work with the pigs. And again, guys, back at the time that Jesus was telling this story, pigs were considered gross and unclean and dirty. And only the lowest of the low people in society would even deal with the pigs. 
So it goes on in verse 16. It says, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate and no one gave him anything. This guy was so poor and so hungry. He wished he had what the pigs were eating and he didn't even get that. This guy is not in a very good position. So let's read on into verse 17. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare and I will perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So this guy realizes, man, even my dad's servants are treated better than I am being treated right now. Remember, he was he was working with pigs. He didn't even have food. He didn't even have food to eat. He wished he could eat what the pigs were eating. So he says, I'm going to go back to my dad and just beg to be a servant because at least that life will be better than this. So in verse 20, it says, and he arose and he came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him. And this is the really incredible part of the story, guys. It says, and had compassion. And he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Guys, his dad didn't yell at him. His dad didn't say, you've made terrible choices. You said you don't love me. I don't love you. No, his dad embraced him and he hugged him and he kissed him and he was so happy that he came home. So this is what the son says to the father. He says, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. It says um, in verse 22, but the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry for my, this, my son was dead and he is alive again. He was lost and he is found. So instead of telling his son, you're not welcome here. I don't love you. You sinned against me. Go away. I want nothing to do with you. He embraced him with love. He, he forgave him and he celebrated. He gave him the best clothes. They had a whole party. They had the best food to eat. He was celebrating that his son came home. That's the kind of love that God has for us. It doesn't matter what kind of choices we make. It doesn't matter the bad things we've done. When we turn back to God and ask for forgiveness, he celebrates, he throws us a party. He gives us his best. He loves you, friends. That's an incredible kind of love. I don't know that I would be able to do what that father did in that situation, that his son treated him so terribly. But that's what's incredible about God's love, guys. It is so perfect and so full and so abundant. Remember, we're learning today that we are deeply loved by God, not just a little bit, a whole lot. That's our truth today, friends. I want you to take that truth, stuff it down in your heart, and anytime that you're feeling down or sad or not feeling worthy, I want you to remember that the God who made the whole universe loves you deeply. That is the truth we carry with us today, friends. So come back next week. We'll have more great Bible studies, stories to study together, and it'll be a blast. I'll see you next time, friends.